Welcome to this video about equivalence testing. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do an equivalence test for group difference with R and Jamobi. First, I'll give you a short summary of what equivalence testing is about. Then I'll show you how to implement that with Jamobi, a free statistics program based on R. And then I'll show you how you can use that to generate R code that you can run in any R environment. So, why do we want to use equivalence testing? There are many situations in which our research theory tells us that some variable is not different between two separate groups. And it would be nice if we could test that in order to test our theory. But how to do that? The traditional thing that was done is using a two-sample t-test, and if it's not significant, then claim that that is proof for our theory that there are no differences between those two groups. Unfortunately, that's wrong. Just because a t-test isn't significant, it doesn't follow that there is no group difference. It could just be a power issue, that our sample size wasn't large enough to find a group difference. So, concluding the equality of two groups regarding some variable based on a non-significant t-test is not a correct option. Well, that leads to the question, is there any other possible test how we can test the equality of a dependent variable between two groups. Unfortunately not. We can't test whether two groups are exactly equal. But there is a partial solution, and that is a test not whether both groups are equal, that is, the group difference is equal to zero, but whether the group difference is equivalent to zero. In an equivalence test, we set an upper and a lower bound for our effect size, and if the effect size is smaller than these boundaries, then we conclude that the group difference is equivalent to zero. Not exactly equal to zero, but equivalent to zero. So we set a lower bound for effect size, for instance for Cohen's D, and an upper bound. And if our effect size is significantly higher than the lower bound, and at the same time significantly smaller than the upper bound, then we conclude that our effect is equivalent to zero. There are two possible ways to test that, which are closely related and lead to the same conclusions. The first is the TOST approach, two one-sided tests, or two one-tailed tests. So first we test whether our group difference is significantly higher than the lower bound, and then we do a second one-sided test, whether the group difference is significantly lower than the upper bound. And if both one-sided tests turn out to be significant, then we conclude that we have equivalence. The second possible way to test that is in constructing a 90% confidence interval and check whether this confidence interval lies completely within the equivalence boundaries. Here our 90% confidence interval, here our upper and lower bound, and in this case the confidence interval lies completely within those boundaries. Therefore, we can conclude that the group difference is equivalent to zero. The most important decision you have to make with equivalence testing is choosing the boundaries. So, to decide what's your smallest effect size of interest, there are several different approaches how to decide that. A very good overview is given in this paper by Lakens, Scheel and Isacher. A link to that paper is in the description of this video. Now let's look how we can implement that with Jamovi and later, based on that, how we can generate R code for this equivalence test. We found the different equivalence tests under TOSTAR. This is not part of the standard Jamovi menu, so if you don't see it, you have to install it first by clicking on Modules, Jamovi Library. Here's the TOSTAR package. In my case, you see installed because I've already installed it. In your case, probably it reads install. Click on it and then you get this menu button for TOSTA. We want to go to the independent samples t-test. And we want to check whether the variable contact has about the same values for men and women. Here we could change the equivalence bound. The default value here is 0.5 for Cohen's D. We could change that to raw values, that is setting the equivalence bounds not on the effect size but on the 
raw data for the group difference. We could change the alpha level. Here is a box with assume equal variances. Normally this test operates on the basis of the Welch t-test. That is, it works even if you have unequal variances in the two groups. So I would really not check this box. And down here we can check descriptive statistics and plots. Now let's look at the results. Here we have the descriptives and we see a rather small mean difference. Now to the equivalence test. The first, the TOST approach is here. We see the t-test, or more precisely the Welch t-test, is not significant. So we don't have a significant group difference when it comes to our dependent variable. But that information is neither necessary nor sufficient for showing equivalence. So here we have the test against the upper limit. The group difference is significantly lower than our upper equivalence bound. And here's the test for the, against the lower limit. And our effect size is significantly higher than the lower bound. And since both those tests are significant, we can conclude that the dependent variable contact is about the same in both groups. Now we go to the second approach to test for equivalence. Here we have the bounds for Cohen's D. Translated into the bounds for the raw group difference. And here we see the confidence interval for the group difference. And we, here we can see that it lies completely within the boundaries. Therefore, from this we could conclude as well that we have equivalence. And the third informal way would be to just look at the plots. This is an implementation of the second approach. That is, we have our 90% confidence interval, our upper and lower bound, and we can see that the confidence interval lies within those bounds. Therefore, we have equivalence. Next, we'll see how we can generate R code from this analysis. In Jamovi, for all those analyses, you can print the R code that you would need to reproduce those analyses. It's under the Jamovi options. And check here syntax mode. And here you'll find the R syntax you need to reproduce those results. But in order to successfully run that in R, we need a couple of adjustments. First of all, this R code is based on the package toster. So the first time you use it, you have to install it. And each R session, you use the toster package, you have to load it with a library command. The second important adjustment is you have to specify your data. This command operates on the data that's in this data frame. So you could just assign your data to this data frame. Let's assume you have loaded into R a data frame called tosdata. So this way you could make sure that this command works with that data, or you could directly change that name into tosdata. Ideally, if you ran that, you would get those results. Unfortunately, as far as I can see, there is a small syntax error in this R code that's generated for this specific type of equivalence test, because I get an error message, and only after I put contact and gender in quotes, then the code runs for me. So those are the three adjustments. Installing and loading the toaster package, putting in the data, and as long as there is this syntax error, which probably will be resolved in a future version, put the name of the dependent variable and the group variable in quotes. If you want to know more about the toaster package, I've put a link to its documentation in the description of this video. Now let's look at the additional syntax options you have. If you want to run a student's t-test and not a Welch t-test, you have to put in this command. If you want to change the equivalence bounds from its default values to the values you need, you put in those two lines. If you want to input raw boundaries and not boundaries defined as Cohen's D, you need this line. If you want to change the alpha level, you get that with this line. This line requests the descriptives. 
and this line requests the plot. That's it. Now you know how, do you, how you can do an equivalence test for a group difference in Jamovi and in R. You'll find a link to my other statistic tutorials in the description of this video.